Awesome. Um, I just want to say I'm really sorry for any like type A people that this, I don't want this to be a distraction. Like, I really thought about you. So if you're out there and you're like, ugh, I thought about you and I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. But there is a point, hopefully, hopefully I always hope to get to a point. I actually don't honestly think, well, I'm not going to say that. I'll get in trouble. So I'm not that good at this. Just, I'm going to say it anyways. I'm not that good at this. And I, for me, it's really hard because I, I I take it pretty seriously. Like, I don't want to say something that isn't true, and I don't want to say anything um, that isn't of God. And so if you want to pray for us right now, just to yourself, I really appreciate it, because I, I want to hear from God today. Um, yeah, before we get started, let me just, let's just open in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we, um, we're just grateful for for your word and for your promises, and um, Father, that um, you cared enough to to send your Son um, to give us your word. And um, God, this morning we just want to be a people that can receive exactly what you have in store for us. That your Spirit would move in such a way, God, that you would just be speaking forth your truth. Uh, it's not about us and what we say, but God, it's about you and what you say and are saying and want each one of us to hear. And so, God, we just want lives to be transformed. God, Father, we want to draw nearer to you and understand you better. And so, God, I just pray that we can do that this morning, uh, that distractions will be cast aside um, and uh, that, God, our, our thoughts could remain pure and um, we can receive exactly uh, what you want from us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, yeah, we are going to continue. You know what? There's something on my heart this morning, too, as we were in worship that I just want to... I think I was reminded of something this morning that, that a prayer that God answered. And um, I was reminded that as Caleb walked in. Um, you know, for years, Ann and I, we did youth group for like 20 years. And it was always our prayer, God, raise someone up because we can't do this forever. You know? And for those of you that don't know Caleb, <laughs> Caleb and his wonderful <laughs> wife, Callie, which also then was an answer to prayer. But, but Caleb leads our youth group. And those that don't know about youth we have a lot of new families here, and a lot of different. You probably, maybe you haven't even seen Caleb here before, because Caleb isn't usually here. What you might not know is that our youth group consists of four different churches. It's it's us, it's Hopewell, it's um, Open Door, and then New Hope in Malden. And so, um, so yeah, so you you don't see them here very often. So, if you don't know Caleb, your families don't know Caleb. You have kids, get to know Caleb and Callie. But years, I mean. It just reminds me of God's faithfulness, and God does answer prayers, and, and, and I just praise God for that. So, Caleb, Callie, good to see you. So, sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I couldn't. Uh, it was just the Lord prompted me to do that this morning and, and wanted to acknowledge you in that. Now, on to Romans. <laughs> so, but as we go through Romans, man, Romans is just, it's such a powerful book. You know, the whole Bible's good, but I encourage you, if you have not read Romans, read it. Read it again, then maybe read it two or three more times after that, okay? Because it really encompasses, you know, the, the heart of, that God had for us and this whole thing of sending Jesus for our salvation and, and what that looks like is us as believers to walk in that and understanding that, that salvation and, and what that really means and the transformation that should take place within our lives if we have truly surrendered ourselves to him, right? And so, um, yeah, we'll just get into this. Did you have anything you want to add to that? No. Okay. Do <laughs> you want to flip the screen? Yes. <coughs> next, I'll go to the next one. So, yeah, we kind of oh. titled this Where Our Hope Is, but Romans Review, kind of what we talked about a little bit, the first four chapters, doesn't encompass everything. It's like there's so much. I, I think... We could take Romans, and we could preach through Romans every 
Sunday for a whole year or two years and probably keep going. You know, I mean, it's just that much there. Um, so the review of what we kind of talked about a little bit so far is like we have all disobeyed God, right? We are all sinners. Um, the human race is guilty. We are all accountable to God. We cannot deny that God exists, right? It says it right there. Um, God has revealed himself to all of humanity, and no one is without excuse. Um, so I, I feel like I've said this a lot. So this is, again, this is me just being like, I am not, I don't know everything. Like, there's no way. And like I have said, like, well, they don't know any better. Have you said that? Well, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. And like that is the thing that the real that goes to my head when people are hurting other people or sinning or whatever. It's like, but they don't know any better. And that it, in Romans it says they do. It says, and I, and I, I'm sorry, but like if you think about it, like have you ever? And I did it this morning. Did you hear what I said? I, I, Sandy always yells at me when I like make myself sound bad, and I'm like, I'm not good at this. And Sandy's like, don't say that. And I said it. Did you hear me say, like, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. And I know that she's going to say something to me later. Like, and so like a lot of people, like I have a friend, I have a friend who has an addiction, and he knows that he has an addiction. And so a lot of times he'll, he'll lead it off with, like, well, I did this this weekend, and I'm like, Ugh. he's like, I know I shouldn't, but... I did it. A lot of times I think they know. They know. Um, I, had a, I was at a funeral, uh, and a guy came up to me, and I don't even know how he got there, so don't even ask me. But what resonated with me was he's like, I'm going to hell. And I, I'm like, what? Like, and, and then I couldn't even get a word out. He's like, I know that's where I'm going. I'm fine with it. There's gonna be, I'm going to have a lot of friends there. And I'm like, wait a minute. Let me talk to you. Like, but he was very confident. He was as confident that he, that's where he was going, as I am, that I'm confident that I'm going to heaven. So actually, I think sometimes we throw that out there. They don't know any better. But I, think, I don't think that's the way God operates. And he says, I, it's not that I don't think, he says that in Romans. That's what we've learned. It says no one, is with, no one has an excuse. No one has an excuse. And I honestly think, and again, this isn't necessarily from the Bible. This is from Andrea. I'm prefacing that, whatever. I honestly think because we are... We are made in God's image. We have this like magnetic pull to God. Does that make sense? Because we're made in his image. Just like when a baby is born, a baby is born, they have a magnetic pull to their mother. They're looking for the one that is looking for them. And, and, and it's, a, it's a healthy thing. That's why if a baby doesn't have a mother, they have someone come in and like do skin to skin and hold the baby because they need to be connected. So there's this magnetic pull to our creator, our magnetic pull to who our image is made from. And so there is no one that has excuse because I, everyone, and again, it's not, I'm not making it up. Romans says it. No one has an excuse. Okay. All right. Next slide. Um, how do we get in right standing with God? You know, it's not gained, we learn in Romans, it's not gained by the law. It's not limited to just Jews. Um, it's not earned through works. Um, it's only by faith in Jesus Christ for all that we can be justified and at peace with God. So we enter into to Romans 5. Um, we're not going to read through the whole thing, but I'm going to kind of, we're going to go through uh, the first part of this. Uh-oh. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I hate to do this to you, but it's just been one of those things I felt like the Holy Spirit's kind of laid on my heart that um, I'm supposed to be reading his word in the King James a little bit for me. And that's for, I'm just talking about for me. That's just where he's led me right now. So I'm going to read this to you in King James. And as I've started reading in King James again, I was like, man, this isn't as confusing as I used to think it was, you know? So that's, that's where it's coming from today. Um, and sorry if you're following along in, in a different version here. But anyway, uh, King James, uh, Romans 5, starting in verse 1. Uh, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to stop there. Um, talks about peace. You know, we live in this world that, I mean, everybody wants peace, right? We all want peace. Um, I think a lot of times we think of peace as like lack of conflict, probably, but, it, but it's bigger than that. Um, 
And I would say peace is not the absence of conflict and suffering. Uh, it's the confidence in knowing who we are in Christ and knowing not only what we are saved from, which is hell, but who we have been saved to, who is Jesus. Right? And that's true peace and, and understanding. And, then, and so it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. So what does it take to have peace with God? Justification. Right? It's a big word. What is justification? What does that mean? Um, and I would say this, it's being justified as a formal acquittal by God, whereby he pronounces a sinner to be righteous because of their faith in Christ, right? So we are looked at as righteous because of our faith in Jesus. We accept him, his forgiveness, his blood is shed. And so thou, now God isn't looking at us. He's looking through Christ at us and we are looked at as righteous. We have now become righteous righteous because of Jesus, right? And that is being justified. And I think you can look at it like this, that um, because of faith in Christ, we are looked at by God as righteous, and it's just as if I'd never sinned, right? Justified, just as if I'd never sinned. We are looked at from God through Jesus as sinless, because of that faith in him. So, <clears throat> let's keep moving on here. Um, verse 2, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hope. Do you know Romans? Romans talks about hope more than any book, other book of the Bible, except for... Um, it's mentioned more in Psalms, but that's like 150 chapters. So comparatively of how big the book in, Romans is a big book about hope. And, and as we talk about hope and what hope means, I mean, it's because we have hope because we're justified through Christ, because of what he's done for us. We're getting to understand what salvation really means and what that, what that looks like, right? Um, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, like um, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And if you're reading in, in the NIV or even the New King James, it, it says, it replaces um, um, patience with um, perseverance, and experience is... Um, character, um, and then obviously hope is hope. But, but this understanding of, okay, <laughs> we have hope, but that hope comes through these not some fun stuff sometimes, right? The um, becoming a Christian, you know, having peace, um, does not mean that we don't have suffering or trials, right? Peace is not about the absence of those things, but it's about knowing who we are in, in Christ. And so, and so he talks about this, this persevering through those things, the experiences that we have. And through those things, as we understand who we are in Christ, we have hope. And knowing that, guess what? All this junk is going on, but we know and we can rest assured in who we are in Jesus. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth, commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. All right? And so this understanding, this justification that process that has taken place, that we have been made righteous because of Jesus, and that is the hope that we have. And so now we can be reconciled, right? What does it mean to be reconciled? Brought back together. Brought back to its original state is what I would even say, like to who God has created us to be, back to this original intent that he had for us. And, um, and so that then is the hope that we carry, right? Because we know who we are in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I wrote that up there just in case. I don't want you guys to forget it. Justified Jesus justifies us just as if we never sinned. So the point, like, God looks at us and he sees Jesus. He doesn't see, he doesn't see us. So, like I said, I, I think we have this magnetic pull towards God to the point of that, like, we have to deny the pull. Like, we have to be like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. But there's no excuse. Just like, I think, I think Jesse looks a lot like Jeff. I think he acts like him. I think Anna looks like a lot, a lot like Lucky Jeff. <laughs> um. Anyway, that, at least that's what everybody told me when they were babies. Oh, they look just like Jeff. Anyway, they would have to, like, deny that fact. I mean, it's obvious. Just like it's obvious that God exists. It's obvious that he created us. We have to be the one that, de- that denies that magnetic pull. They have to be the one that would be like, no, that's not my dad, even though you look just like him. Like, so I wanted to write this up there, and then I'm going to put this di- I know I've done this before, but, you know, repetition, it's good. So God is like... The trunk and the roots and all that stuff. And then it says in the Bible, Jesus is the branch. Jesus is the, This is going to be a tree, by the way, in case anyone gets confused. Um, so this is going to be a tree. Blah, blah, blah. So Jesus is the branch. And then the Holy Spirit, that's like the core. Let's, we're doing an apple tree here. That's the core. And then we, if we accept all of this, if we accept the Holy Spirit, we're connected to Jesus, we say, yes, Jesus, we're not denying God, we're not denying you, then that's when we can produce fruit. That is not that great of an apple. But do you understand what I'm saying? So all three connected, all three one, all three working together, and I have to be the one that accepts it, okay? Um, do, 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 do. Okay. The other thing is, like, even Jesus, so back, back to the thing that I said before, like, where do we get, you know, the excuse thing from? And Jesus said that, right? When he was on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's, the, that's where I got it from. And, and that's true. And, but but I th- honestly, Jesus is like, forgive them. They don't know what all has to, they don't get it. Their brain isn't, they don't understand. They don't get it. But Jesus is our advocate. It says in the Bible, Jesus prays for us. In Rome, we're going to get there, Romans 8. It says Jesus prays for us. But God says, you're right, you're right. But if they do not repent, if they do not repent, God says in the end, they don't have an excuse because it's obvious. So it doesn't matter. The wages of sin is death. The payment of sin is death. And Jesus paid our debt in full if we accept his invitation to do so. And that's it. That's it. We don't have any excuse. So, but thank God we have Jesus on our side, right? Jesus is praying on the throne, praying for us right now. Like, come on, get it. Please get it. (laughs) Okay, let's go to the next slide. So what does the world say that says sin is subjective? What a sin is to you may not be to me, right? Don't we hear that a lot? We see that, hey, what's, what's good for you? That's fine. That's not... Okay? Showing worldly love, and, and remember, this is what the world says. This isn't what we're saying that Scripture says. Showing worldly love and kindness means I'm a good person and is my exemption. Love is letting people live the way they want to live. You are only accountable to you, and the way others live is none of my business. Speaking truth is being judgmental and hateful. Do we see that at all? God is hidden or non-existent, and excuses are unlimited. So another thing that I think 
And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I like to treat this like we're in my living room and I'm just like talking out my weird thoughts with you. Like I don't, yeah. But I have always thought too, like sometimes people have been lied to. That's why they're, that's why they're deceived. I mean, no, anybody with me? Like there's some people that really believe lies. And so it's just like, ah, oh, but they did that because this is what they, that's what they were told. And this is what they believe. But again, you go back in Romans and it says, there is no excuse. And so I'm just like, oh, I just really want to find that excuse, though. Ugh. Like, excuses are fun. They make me feel better about myself. <laughs> like, like, but it says, no, there is absolutely zero excuses. And so I got to thinking about that. I'm like, well, what if someone has been lied to? Whatever. But honestly, it says in the Bible, like 50 times, 50 times it says, do not be deceived. So God literally warns us 50 times don't be deceived, don't fall for this, be alert, be watching, be looking. <laughs> so again, there is no excuse because it's not like he didn't tell us this was going to happen. He literally, and he says in the last days it's going to be astronomical, and I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes there is so much lies going on, whether it's, it's everywhere. It's like I can't breathe. Like It's like what is true? What, what? And I'm talking about obviously this is true. But I'm talking about news and different things. It's like, did that really happen? Is that really true? Are they making that up? Is that, like, whatever. Like, it's like, I can't breathe. How am I going to, whatever. But again, God says, you, I told you. I told you not to be deceived. I told you, like, 50 times. And, like, it's like, if somebody tells you, like, I feel like I, like, say the same things over, to my, over and over to my kids. And the things that I repeat are the things that matter. And so this matters. Can you go to the next one? Okay, can you read that? Do not be this is just a this few, is just a few just 50. a few verses that that we picked out but um, Deuteronomy 11:16 take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them Galatians 6 7 be not deceived God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap first Corinthians 6 9 to 11 do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, no, not covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified. You were justified, made righteous because of Jesus in our um, faith in him. Uh, in the name of Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's been a lot of people that have done different studies, but the CIA did this, brought in people, and they wanted to see how easy it was to manipulate people. And so they brought in like, I think it was like 19 people, and they were like, "We're going to ask you, we're going to ask you a series of questions, and um, we just want you to answer them, just like what you think." Just what you think, just answer them, whatever. We're going to start out really easy. So they started out, they put, up, they put up a shape, and they're like, what shape do you see? And the thing is, 18 of the people were planted there, and they were planted there to answer the question wrong. And then the 19th person is me. And I'm there thinking, like, I'm just here for this study. I'm getting paid for this. I'm fine. Okay. So they go through the 18 people, and they say, okay, what shape do you see? First person, ah, easy, triangle, Ugh. And then they go through it, triangle, triangle, obviously a triangle. Triangle, me too, triangle, triangle. So they get to me, and I'm 19, and I'm like, that doesn't, like each person that goes, I'm like, that's, a, like the first person that goes, I'm like, oh, that, ee. like they need glasses or something, like what's going on? The second person that goes is like, what's happening? What's happening? Third, fourth person goes, fifth person, you're like, what? And then it's like, am I, do I need glasses? Like, am I wrong? Like, what is happening? So then you get to the 19th, you're in, you're in front of a big crowd like this, or like this or whatever. What are you going to say? Are you going to say rectangle? Or are you going to go triangle like everybody else? Now, before you answer, let's go, can we go back? Can we go back a slide? How many, when we're talking about, in the third one, if we're talking about homosexuals, we're talking about all these different things that we're just like, yeesh, if we're talking about abortion, if we're talking about all these things, it, depending on what crowd you're with, the 18 people that are in front of you, how are you answering that question if this is wrong or if this isn't wrong? Right? Right? So you, this is just a warning. And again, I'm just, I'm sharing what God is sharing with me, but it's just like, 
God told us 50 times, don't be deceived. Don't fall for it. And that's what they're out to do. And when I say they, I mean Satan. I mean demons. They're alive and well today. And they want to deceive you. That's the whole point. And do, do you want to fall for it? Not me. And the biggest way not to is to know that you can be. I can be deceived. I have been deceived. <laughs> I have fallen for just the dumbest stuff where it's just like, how did I not? see that? How did I fall for that? And so I am always on guard because more and more, guess what? This doesn't feel like home anymore. I don't feel like I'm home anymore. Whether I'm at couch school or whatever, whatever, I don't feel like this is home anymore. I'm looking at the news. I'm looking at the world. This is looking icky. And you know when you're like in a different place, like let's say I go like, I don't know, like a kind of a sketchy part of like Chicago and I get out of the car. I'm just like, I'm, I feel a little... I'm going to be looking over my shoulder, right? I'm going to be like, I don't know where I'm at. I'm not at home. I don't feel necessarily safe because I'm not, this isn't where I normally am. That's how, I'm sorry, that's how we should feel, like in the sense of we, we have peace because we have Jesus. Like nothing, no one can do anything to me. But as far as being deceived, I want to be looking over my shoulder and checking. Like, yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and check that, see if that matches up with this. And if it doesn't, then I'm out of here. Like, that's, and I'm not going to fall for this. I'm going to know that I can be deceived. And again, I know I've said this a million times, but it's like Adam and Eve, we look at them like they're so stupid. Like, everyone else, like, Adam and Eve, like, it's just like, but they are actually, they were probably, my, their brain probably worked way, like, 100 times better than mine. They were the first people God made, so they're fresh. I mean, they are not sick. Like, they, they're, yeah, they're full function. Like, and they're, they're talking to God daily. It says God walked, you know, came down, walked in the garden with them, talked to them, and they got deceived? Then you better believe that I can be deceived. So it's got to be this thing where it's just like, okay, I am going to use the sound mind that God gave me. I am going to look at this critical thinking and be like, okay, okay, God, you're the only one I can believe, so I'm going to look at this with your eyes. And I think this this understanding that we need to have as believers, just knowing how the, what the world is trying to do. You know, as you, you watch media, you listen to different things. Everyone is trying to get you to look at things a certain way. And at first, you know in the back of your mind, like, yeah, it doesn't seem right. But the more and more it's talked about, the more and more it's accepted by, by people, like, oh, this is just the way, the more and more then it's like, oh, yeah, that, that is a triangle. Right? You understand what I'm saying? And so we have to be careful as, as, as believers, you know, with faith in Jesus that, look, we don't look through things through the world's eyes. That's not how we look. We look through his eyes, which is through his word. We're called to know it, to read it, you know, to, to consume it, right? And, and do we do that? Right? Okay. So this is what I, go ahead and read it for me, will you? This is what I said already, but. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has given me a sound mind to use. Ask God for wisdom every day. That's, Scripture says it. Mm -hmm. Right? Scripture, do we believe it? So we are, we are people that we have been given the mind of, he's, he's given us a brain. Let's use it. And I, I think it's interesting because, like, the, he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power. Do you feel that? Because I sometimes am like, actually, I mean, I get up here every time and I'm like, I'm kind of weak, actually. I'm not really articulate sometimes. I confuse people sometimes when I'm talking. Like, am I really, like, but he, he gives us a spirit of power. Where does that come from? This. Because the more time I spend in here, the more confident I am in the truth, and maybe I'll mess up my words because I'm not perfect, but I know that I know that God is speaking to me because I am confident in what he has given me through this. So the more time you spend in here, the more confident you will be. If you feel like you're weak, if you feel like I don't even know what I'd say in this situation, then fix it. Fix it. And I would add to that that do I trust people in this room? Yes. Do I want you to trust us? Yes. But would I tell you to just take our word for it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Find Test. it out for yourself. Test it for yourself. Test it for yourself in the Word. That's what we're commanded to do. We're, the Breans, they were praised for it. Right? 
How do you find the truth? Only the truth stands up to questioning. Only the truth doesn't mind being questioned. The truth doesn't mind being challenged. Challenge it, question it, test it. The more you figure out the world is lying to you, the more you will look to God for answers. So true. Anyway, I had, I had a teacher, and this particular teacher would always tell me the same thing. And she would always say, question the world around you. Question the world around you. And she knew where I stood on a lot of things. And growing up, yeah, like I was who I was because my parents took me to church, and I kind of had all the right answers, the main answers, you know. And so she knew that. And so it's like, question, question the world around you, Andrea. And she, what she was really probably, I don't know, but I think I always felt like it was like bending towards question your faith. Don't just be who this, don't just follow your parents or don't just whatever. And so I always was like, oh, I don't, that feels weird. I don't want to do that. But as I've gotten older, she'd be proud of me because I have. I have. Because I want to know why I know what I know because I know it. I don't want to be like, well, my mom told me this one time, blah, 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 blah. And that's what I tell them all the time, too. It's just like, you better know it because you can't be quoting your mom for the rest of your life. That's not going to make it. You have got to know why you believe what you believe. And so but the thing is, she gives great advice. Question the world around you. And you can question this because guess what? It's the truth, so it'll stand up to questioning. It stood up to questioning for how many years now? Nobody can prove it wrong. Try it. I dare you. I dare you. Like, it's, it's unfathomable. And I'm like, the thing is, a lot of people believe, like, Christians, I don't know, like, when I was in school, like, I just felt like people were like, oh, she's just a goody-goody girl or whatever. And I got to tell you, like, I actually hate that kind of stuff. I hate fake. I hate, like, like I want to know the truth. Like, I don't like when people lie to me. Ooh, it's really hard. That's one of the hardest things for me to forgive. <laughs> like, it's just like, ooh, because if you lie to me once, what else have you lied to me about? And so I never want to do that. I never want to do that to my kids. So, like, I am not this person that just is like, you know what? I just got all these fuzzy feelings and Jesus, woo! Like, it's like, I, I, lo I love this. I love this because it's fact. My relationship with with God is based on fact. It's not based on, well, I felt so good that day. All the tingly feelings. Woo, Jesus. Like, no, it's fact. And you can, you can take it. So we, we gave this paper out before. And it's like all the prophecies from the Old Testament matched up with the stuff from the New Testament. Do you remember me saying this? Okay. A really cool piece of paper here. But guess what? I didn't create it. I got this from somebody else. So have I, have I, have I looked at every single one of these to make sure it's right? No, but I, ha I, I, I think it is, and I want to give it to you, and guess what I want you to do? Try to find one that's wrong, please. I hope you do, because that will prove that you're searching for truth yourself. And nobody, like, the Bible has 66 books, <laughs> and like, how many different authors? Like, 40, 40, 40 something authors, and it was wrote over like 1,500 years, and it all comes and matches and comes together like a puzzle. What? What? I can't even write an essay. Like, what? Like, that's insane. That, imagine doing, like, a group project. Have you ever did a group project at school, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I got that person in my group. They're not going to work. What? For, like, all these different authors over that much time come together. Obviously, that wasn't them. Obviously, this group project was orchestrated by God. Obviously. Prove it wrong. Prove it wrong. Anyway, I got these papers again. If anybody wants to take them home, and have it for yourself. Anyway, okay, you want to go to the next slide? I'll go. So this is, this is showing it like as an arc to show it. Like for, over here is Genesis, over there is Revelation, all the different how it matches up. This is the paper that I just showed you that you can get afterwards if you'd like. Okay, so here we go. I'm really sorry. I don't think we have time for it, even okay. though it's very special. Okay. <laughs> another time, another time. Okay. So, how many people um, watched the Olympics, like the opening ceremonies? Maybe a few, maybe none. Yeah? Um, so, a lot of people got upset about, like, mainly just one thing. Maybe, maybe just one thing. And it's really, that, that, that was not great, but the things that st stick out to me are like, did anyone see this? Did anyone see that? It's like a golden calf. 
Like, do you remember? I do. I remember, again, going back to the, I'm, I'm a questioner. I'm, I'm a fact checker. I'm a, this better be true. I, I remember sitting in Sunday school being like, <laughs> they melted their jewelry down and created a calf and then worshiped it. What kind of idiots are these people? I'm not believing this. Like, who would do that? Who would worship like a bull that they made out of gold? Like, I, I, like, do you, anyone? Am I the only one? Ashley, come on. Come on. You felt it. Anyways, I was like, no way. So at the Olympics, guess what? There was a, there was a bull. Okay, go to the next slide. So this, this is, this is even ickier to me, actually, and most people don't know about it. But in 2022, there's this, it's called the Commonwealth Games, and it only, it's, it's just like the Olympics, but we don't watch it because we're not a Commonwealth country, so we don't, tar- we don't partake in it. But it is literally just like the Olympics. They have an opening ceremonies. They do all of it, blah, blah, blah. This was the opening ceremonies in 2022. Do you see what that is? It's a bull. <laughs> and not only a bull, but we're, we're actually bowing down and we're worshiping the bull. At one point, at the end, we were all, they were all like, like singing music and dancing around the bull. And it's like, what does that remind you of? That's straight out of the Bible. Like, what? And in the back, in the back is... The Tower of Babel. And it's not, oh, Andrew, and most people would. Most people, Andrew, you're just, you just want it to be the Tower of Babel. You're just saying it because it kind of looks like a tower. No, if you go on Google, check, fact check me. Go on Google and watch it. You can watch the, the whole ceremony, and you can find, the commentators call it the Tower of Babel. And they're dancing around it, dancing on it. And it's like, what does this have anything to do with sports? It doesn't have anything to do with sports. <laughs> but you know what it is? Oh, can you go to the next one? Oh, gosh. Ooh. What it is, is these are, these aren't, this isn't a ceremony. These are rituals. These are rituals that, that they are, like, just like, you know, like, before we eat today, most likely we're going to pray. Or at home, like, we pray for our kids before we go to bed. Before a situation or an event, like, we're giving it to God. Like, we're giving our meal to God. You know what they're doing? This is, a, this is a ritual, a satanic, demonic ritual, and they are giving the Olympics, they gave the Commonwealth Games to Satan. That's what they're doing. It doesn't celebrate anything. It doesn't celebrate their country. It doesn't, cel- it doesn't make any sense. And it, we have to use critical thinking and use our minds that God has given us to see that, yeah, yeah, that's not. That's not true, and I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it. Okay, so... A friend actually sent me this because I couldn't watch the entire like ceremonies because I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like it's evil. It's evil. So a friend sent me this and was like, uh, just referenced it to Revelation and the pale, the pale horse, the pale rider. And I don't know if that's I don't know if any of that's true, but it sure looks like that it sure looks like that person's pale. Do you know what I'm talking about? The four horsemen of the apocalypse. One of them is a pale horse with a pale like, with the rider that is death. And does that not look like death to you? Does that not look like that to you? Okay, so then, then to just top it all off, I just think it's, and it's not, you can't have this many coincidences. So the river that all the athletes came in on, the river that this horse was riding on, do you know what it's called? I'm going to have to get my phone because no one's going to believe me. Where is my phone? No. I'm going to have to use your phone. Okay, I'm going to get my Google Translate out. Because again, fact check it. Don't just take my word for it. Translate. Okay. Ready? Sin. Sin. Do you hear it? So in, here in the United States, they would call it like scene. That's the Sin River. But they actually pronounce it Sin. Sin. Sin River. And again, you know what? Coincidences, whatever, but let's just keep going. You want to keep going? Go to the next slide. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so the Sin River is disgusting. It hasn't been allowed to be swam in, swam, swam in for a hundred years. For a hundred years. And they were like, we got to get this thing cleaned up because we want to do our triathlon, we want to do all our rowing in it. And so they tried, They spent, um, I don't know how much money trying to clean it up. And guess what? 
still, on July 30th, they still, it still wasn't super clean. But you want to read that for me? Just read that exact thing. Leaders have been testing the water continuously, and on July 30th, through an independent monitoring group, classified the health risk as being in a gray zone. Gray zone. Like, ew. Ew. Jesus. Like, you remember the whole thing, Jesus isn't gray? Don't let anybody tell you Jesus is gray? Like, gray zone? Would you want to swim in something that's a gray zone? That hasn't, it's been illegal to swim in for 100 years, but then all of a sudden you're like, ah, we're going to try to clean it up so you guys can get in there. Uh, I'm not going in there. I'm not risking my life for that. Do you want to go to the next one? Okay, so this is one of our Olympic athletes, one of our Olympic athletes, Seth Ryder. Okay, he, so he is willing to go to extreme lengths to compete in the Olympic triathlon, even if he's faced with pollution issues in the River Sin. And these are quotes by him. You, we know that there's going to be some E. coli exposure. So I just want to try to increase my E. coli threshold by exposing myself a little bit, uh, to a little bit of E. coli in my everyday life. Just little things throughout the day, like not washing my hands after I go to the bathroom, stuff like that. <sighs> so what do, what do we do? We expose ourselves to sin just a little bit, just a little bit. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I'm, I'm with the right group, whatever, a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, till you're drowning in that stupid sin river and, and it's death. What? Is this a coincidence? Is any of this a coincidence? No. Do you want to go to the, the next one? Okay. So now we're to this. And this is the only thing that people, I feel like this is the only thing that people were talking about. And it's just a screenshot. It's just a screenshot of it. And there's, oh, it's, it's blasphemous, whatever. And that's true, it is. But what made me angry was that there were, honestly, I felt like a good amount of people, a good amount of Christians, actually, that were, that were on the side of, it's not, it's actually not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And you know what? You guys all don't love people enough. That's because all those people, all those people would have been invited to Jesus' table. Dang straight they would have been. <laughs> like, they would have been. But guess what? You're missing the whole point. It's not just a picture that they took to represent maybe who God would want at his table. This is a video, which you no longer can watch, by the way. They took it down, so you can't watch it. Is... Is the bread and cup, is, is God's, is God's uh, bread and cup on that, on that table? No. In fact, they brought out this big thing, this big pot with this, like, feast in it. And then they picked up the lid, and what was underneath it? A bunch of food and different things around it, like a feast, and, a, and a, basically a naked guy. Like, <laughs> singing sensual songs sensual songs, and then as he was singing this sensual song, they're all like rubbing up against each other, and then there's a little girl. There's a little girl. Do you see the little girl over here? She's like got yellow, yellow and white. Do you see it? So they're all dancing sensual, like, like, and I hate to say bad words. I don't want to say bad words, but like an orgy. Like, they're, and it's, you, it's obvious. Like, it makes you feel sick to your stomach when you watch it, and then they pick up the little girl, and they're dancing sensually with her, doing whispers. Like one other guy, which was barely wearing clothes, whispers something in her ear. And then they just whisk her off to God knows where. Does anybody have, like, icky feelings? Because I sure do. And I'm sorry, but I'm not putting my stamp of approval on this saying, God loves everybody. What? God loves that little girl, and you know what it says about that? Where's, where's, my, where's my notes? The whole, like, millstone, like, if you hurt one of my kids, the whole millstone thing, you might as well, basically, you might as well be dead. Like, God takes his little kids seriously. <clears throat> I'm okay. I'm okay. <sighs> anyway, the point is, all of those people are invited to God's table. Don't hear me not say that. They all are invited to God's table. But see, what they did... <laughs> they came to God's table and they flipped it and said, we don't want this. We don't want this. We want our buffet. We want our buffet of food. And guess what? God's table isn't a buffet. I like buffets. Why do you like buffets? I like it because I get to go and just be like, I can taste any, all of it. 
I can try this. If I don't like it, I can throw it out and get a new plate. And I can take as much as I want and just taste everything. It's like sin, right? God doesn't offer a buffet. There's one thing on the menu. It's Jesus. You want it. You don't want it. You're all invited. They don't want it. Like, I'm not trying to be, but as of right now, whoever orchestrated this doesn't necessarily want it. And that's a choice that they have. That is a choice that they're making. So they disinvited. Can you imagine going to a party? You're going to a party. Let's say I'm going to Erica's house. I'm going to Erica's house. And she makes, she makes a, her, her table for me. And then I tell her, I don't want this, actually. Can I have something else? Like, I don't want this. And also, can you leave? Can you imagine that? No, because that's insane. That's insane. And that is what they did here. Jesus is not at that table. His, his, his supper is not at that table. And guess what? I'm not any better than those people. So don't hear me say that either, because you know what I do? I don't, disinvite, I don't disinvite God to his table, and I don't say I don't want that. But what I do is I don't necessarily come to this table, because I have my own table. See this beautiful thing over here? Oh, unfortunately, this is the way my table looks most of the time. Some of these things represent some things. Some of them are just what they are, like, like toys everywhere in my life. But what I do is, God, I'm involved. I'm involved in all this stuff. This is my stuff. So, like, could you come over here? I got a chair for you. Can you, like, can you just come here and help me with my things? Help me with all my stuff? No, I don't want to come over there. I need you to come over here. It's just easier. Just come over here, and I need you to fix some of this stuff for me. Just have a seat. There's plenty of room, right? So I'm no better than them. I just do it differently, right? And they're both wrong. They're both wrong. (laughs) And what I have to tell myself is that I have to leave all of this stuff at the foot of the cross, and I am walking over to to the table that I was invited to, I'm walking over to the table I was invited to, and I'm saying, yes, Jesus. And you know what? I, I loved worship this morning. Thank you, Jason, and everybody that was involved in worship this morning. Like, I always tell my kids, like, when we come in here, like, you don't have to raise your hand, but you better believe that I am. And I always, I tell them three things. Do you remember the three things? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you told me them this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, forgive me of my sins and me. You repent. You don't want to be deceived. We already talked about that. I'm coming to this table and I'm repenting because I did stuff. <laughs> all that. I did all that. And I'm coming, to this, I'm coming to this table. I am doing these three things because I want God to see me. And guess what? When you go to, a, when you go to like an open house, let's say I'm going to, do we have, do we have, it doesn't matter. Like, I was, I, I'm going to Mackenzie's open house. Mackenzie was a senior this year. Guess who, like, there's a bunch of people there. There's a bunch of people at Mackenzie's open house, like a lot. But who am I making sure I see? And they see me. Mackenzie, Mackenzie the host of that party. <laughs> because I want to make sure I see her, the graduate. Like, when I come here, there's a lot of people here. And I want to talk to all of you. I don't get there, necessarily. But I want to make sure that God sees me here. And so I'm raising my hand and I'm saying, I'm here. I am here for you. And can I, can I sing the one, the one verse here? I'm sorry, I probably skipped slides and I really feel bad about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep going. This one, because we don't have time. Can you read this for me? You want me to read the Isaiah verse? Yeah, right there. Yep. Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Okay. So I don't know if you feel that the way I feel, but it's like, have you not known? Have you not heard? And I just want to be like, I don't know, maybe not. Tell me, what is it? Like, have you not been told from the beginning? What is it? Tell me what it is. How important is this? 
Have you not understood that from the foundations of the earth, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and his inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out. Okay, so the point is, he's not that far away. And everything, the whole world wants to lie to you and tell you that, well, he's somewhere, but he's with you. But where is he? Like, do you know how many kids that are in, in children's church that say stuff like, well, I love, like, I love Jesus, but where, where is God? Like, they don't understand the concept. Why? Because it's like, what? he's right above us. And he's, he looks down at us like grasshoppers. Like grasshoppers. So how many, like, have gone to the gym? You've been up in the balcony. You know what I'm talking about? I know not everybody's from Cows, but think of a gym, balcony, you're up at the very top. So if we go to see uh, Miss, Mrs. Rosala's wonderful music events that are there with our kids, like what happens? Your kids come out, for the, and they're doing, they're doing a music thing. What happens? First of all, I never get there on time, obviously. So I'm sitting in the balcony, and, and um, my daughters are like, they want to know where I'm at, right? So what do they do? All of your kids are the exact same way. What do they do? They walk out, they're looking, they're looking, where, where are you? I want to find you, where are you? And then when they do, what happens? Yes! I mean, my daughter is just like, yes, yes! And then they can't take their eyes off us. They found us, and that's the whole point of waving. And I wave back, like, I'm acknowledging, yes, I do see you, I do see you. And then, guess what? Every single move, they're doing it for me. And I'm just like, you are doing so good. You're my baby. You're doing it. Anyways, that is exactly what I want to do for God. And in this building and anywhere I go, because he is directly above me. And I'm just like a grasshopper. Just like a grasshopper. So I guess what? I'm raising my hand. I'm saying, do you see me? I want you to see me. Because I don't want to get lost down here. I want you to see me. And I want to, make an, and I want to be doing whatever I'm doing. For you. Like, whatever that is. I want to be doing it for you. Not anybody that I'm with, not anybody else that's in this room or this building, but for you. I, there was a lot we skipped, and it was, it was, yeah. <laughs> Jay, if you want to get the, get the kids, you want to bring them back in for, yeah. you can do that. Um. I know it's a lot, and we are sorry. We have a lot more here, and we're not going to continue <laughs> with that because it's so. Yeah, it's time but, to go. Anyway. Oh, can I say one more thing? Mm, mm. Okay. <laughs> it was good. It was good, though. It's good. So, um, the thing I said about like, where are you? You're searching. Like, where are you? Where are you? So when I was when I was preparing for this, like, I accidentally I like fell asleep. Uh, preparing for the, like the, during the week like I was just like so t exhausted I fell asleep and I fell asleep in a place I don't normally sleep like the floor like it's just like what or something you know what I mean like you never fall asleep somewhere like even on vacation it's just not where you normally sleep and you kind of wake up scared and you're like where am I like I, I did that and I was just like I felt like God said do you ask that where are you because I do and, and then I was like, what? And then I looked back in Genesis, and guess what? After Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, guess what God did? He came down, and he asked, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And honestly, like, we have a lot of great, this, I'm, I'm whatever, I'm going to do it anyway. We have a lot of great daddies in this room. We have a lot of great daddies, and a lot of these, a lot of these men would do anything for their kids. I mean, anything. They will make sure that they are on the team. They will make sure that they have like, good work ethic and that they're working hard and they'll, t they'll, they'll buy anything for them, like, like stupid baths that cost like a million dollars. Like They'll do all these things. They'll, they'll say, hey, you need to practice. You need to be the best person you can be. You need to work on your grades. You need to whatever. We've got great dads here. But when is the last time anybody asked their kids, where are you, really? Because we're running out of time. You need to know where your kids are spiritually. <laughs> you need to, and you, first you need to know where you are. And then you, we need to do it. We need more good men asking that question, where are you? We need to be seekers of truth, right? And we talk about that a lot as we're up here. It's about truth, truth, truth. But, but that is what it's about. Knowing his word 
and, and making that apply in our lives. And we don't want to be a people that is standing here and everybody's telling us different things. No, we need to be able to say, like, uh, no, that's a rectangle, right? Just because everybody else is saying it's one thing, we are called to be a people that speaks the truth. And guess what? We might hurt people's feelings. But if we love people, we want them to know the truth. And I'm not saying we point condemnation on people, that we hurl insults at people. But people, if they don't know the truth and they don't hear the truth, then we don't care and love them. We don't care at all. We don't. Because if we're okay with them experiencing the wrath of God when he comes back or, or, or they go and they spend eternity with him, that's not love, right? It's not love. We've been asked, we've been invited. Everyone has been invited to this table, right? Not to come here and to make it our own table, to say, no, I want a little bit of everything. I'm going to dabble here. I'm going to dabble there. No, we're going to dabble in, in this. This is what we're going to dabble in, right? And this is where we're going to go is what, what this, where he tells us to go. And what he says is the truth. What he says is the right way to live. What he says is acceptable because it's the best possible way to live. And we invite us to his table to say, look, my blood, my body that I've shed for you so that God, my Father, can look through me to see you as pure and worthy to enter his kingdom and to sit with him there. Right? But if it's going to be about our own table and we're just trying to invite him, like, well, here's a little spot for you. You can have this corner. I'm not even going to give you the good chair. Do we do that? And that's, that's the Jesus that the world wants you to think about. Is this guy that we just, you know, you can let him into the parts of life, but you're going you're gonna to say, I'm going to dictate what's okay in my life. That's not who God is. And if that's what you believe and you want to allow the other people around you to believe that, you don't love them. You don't. So this morning we're going to take, you have something to say. The box was for the communion part of it. Like all these things represent something. This one's just empty. And it's like we all have something. And it could be something really hard that we're going through that we just don't want to let go of. And I, I mean, I've had a lot in the last couple of years. Right now I feel like it's couch school. Like I don't know what the world's going on, but it's, it's scary. It's scary right now. Um, it could be... A miscarriage, it could be infertility, it could be anything that is what you're holding on to that you're like, God, I need you to come here and deal with this, please. I need you to come over here. But he's like, no, I need you to put it in this box and to put it at the foot of the cross and walk over and tell me I'm enough even if I can't fix that. I'm enough because you want to be invited to this table. So when you're taking your communion, think about what, what is it that you need to lay at the foot of the cross. And don't hear us saying that like those things don't matter that we need to put in that box. They matter. And there's hurts. They very much matter. Right? And life is painful. What do we read at the beginning of Romans 5? It says, what, what's going to happen? You know, there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be suffering. We're not exempt to that. But those things, if we take them the way that that God says, and, and, and we know who we are in him, then we can take those things, and that's what we have hope in. Saying, God, I know this is junk, and it's going, this, this stuff's going on, and life doesn't feel good right now, but I know, I know I've been invited to your table, and that's where I'm going to sit. Because this is enough. So I'd ask you this morning, is he enough? Is he enough? Because he is. And if you don't know that, I'd encourage you to search that out for yourself because he is. He's enough. So I'm just going to ask this morning, why don't we come up, um, get your 
juice and bread, and we'll take communion together uh, once everybody gets it. Is that all right? So why don't we go ahead, come up. I want to encourage us today that, so, so you know, when you hear a message like that, and you see some of the figures and things like that that they shared. There, there's, there's, there's a dynamic in us that would start to stir and make us maybe fearful. What's all coming? What's, what's happening? What's happening around us? And I want to encourage us because it says, uh, it, I, I just was really drawn to the passage in Isaiah, Isaiah 59. That says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, how many would agree that we saw a flood there? It says that God will raise a standard against it. I like the way the Met Eugene Peterson in the message puts it this. He says, for he will arrive like a river in flood stage, whipped to a torrent by the wind of God. You know, I, I want to encourage us because if you saw, if you listened to, uh, there was a strong testimony of Jesus Christ by the athletes, by a lot of the athletes at the, at the Olympics. And I was talking to Jeff a little earlier, and it was like the enemy came in like a, like a flood. He, he, he came in and he tried to, uh, what, what's it say? When the enemy uh, uh, came in like a flood, it's almost like the Spirit of God said, Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. I want you to know I got a remnant here. I got a remnant here. You may try to put your best foot forward. You may try to scare everybody. But I want you to know that I reign and I have the last word. And I appreciate the fact that what they talked about initially was about hope. They started, notice how they started about hope. Because when we see things like that, we can lose all hope, can't we? And that's what that kind of stuff is meant to be. It's a mockery of our hope. And it's to steal our hope. But Jesus Christ reigns and has the last word. That's why we take communion, because we celebrate what that Jesus has the last word. He defeated sin and death. I so appreciate the alarm that was sounded today. So much. We need to hear that. We need to hear the alarm sound because we go to sleep. We need to hear the alarm sound. And now we get to celebrate together the hope that we have through Jesus Christ and he said do this in remembrance of me and he said this is my body broken for you take and eat let's take and eat and celebrate the hope of his body broken for us Jesus died for me and shed his blood for me, that I have hope, that I, he, that he hasn't given me a spirit of fear. But the alarm's been sounded. And we need to remember that we're covered by his blood. We're covered by his blood. you know what? I know that they would say it was all worthless if we don't take take it in. We don't start discerning the word. We don't start, start challenging. We don't start to stand for truth. Amen. 
Let's stand together. And he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Fall us to stand before the throne. And on Christ the solid rock I stand. All We, 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 we're, we're here a little later than usual, but guess what? We have lunch. How about that? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have lunch, and we, we, we go, out, go out that door and in and around and come back in this way. But before we do that, we've got to move chairs and things like that. If the little kids want to go out to the core of the gym, they, they're welcome to and so on while we sort through things here. Um, but if you want to help, uh, if you want to help uh, move the chairs and tables, set up tables, that'd be great. Please stay. Please stay. Don't. If you don't, I, I know how it goes. You feel like if you haven't brought anything, you think you feel guilty. No, 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 no. That's not the way we work. We're family here, right? But let's have a prayer for the meal before we finish here, okay? Father God, we are thankful that you send those uh, watchmen on the wall. We, we experienced a watchman on the wall today. We thank you that, Lord God, the alarm has been sounded. And that, Lord God, when the alarm sounded, it, it sounded to put us in motion. Not just to stand there to listen to the alarm, but to act and become prepared for battle. Lord, I pray that that would be the case for all of us, Lord Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for this family. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to uh, eat together, to fellowship together. And we ask a blessing upon our time and our meal. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.